today we're going to paint a puppy using as few brush strokes as possible. So let's get started. Well, I haven't painted for quite a while, probably about a month or so. It's been, there's been a lot going on here. And one of the things that happened was the Collie rescue dog that we had, who had many, many health problems, uh, especially kidney problems, he took a turn for the worse and died really, really quickly. And it was just heartbreaking for us. And it's taken me a long time to get over it. I went into magical thinking and just believed if we adopted this dog, like he would have none, none of the problems that he had. I take a lot of comfort in what people have written me, letting me know that we gave him the best life, even though it was short, we gave him the best life that, that he could have. And it was his first experience with being a dog, I mean, being purely a dog, having a yard to run in and, and people to play with. And it was just so exciting to see him blossom. But anyway, that's not what this is about, except for the fact that I obviously want to manifest and have a puppy because I'm drawn to painting animals again, which I almost never do. Now, I used to make a living painting dog and cat portraits, and then I stopped doing it entirely. But lots of times I find when I paint that I'm, have to, I'm working through some sort of emotional thing, and clearly I have a desire for a puppy. Now, what? <laughs> we're not going to get a puppy, but this helps me get over that desire the other thing that it does, and, and this might happen for you too, is I have no problem painting someone else's dog at the moment. I have plenty of pictures of our dogs and collies over the years, but I would be too emotionally involved in it if I was to paint them. So I put a little message on um, one of the collie pages on Facebook and asked if people would send me some pictures. And so I got quite a few and many to choose from. So now we'll get to the painting part. I'm doing what I usually do, which is I'm using that uh, red plexiglass red plexiglass value finder in order to determine what the different values are. I put in the darkest darks first. I needed to know where the eyes, the nose, and that little bit of a identity tag is. That's going to go darker later, but I needed that as a placeholder for right now. The other thing that you might think is a little weird is that I put cerulean blue on the top of his nose. Now the reason I do that is I often will see a color value swap out. In other words, the value at the top of the nose is that value. In other words, that's how dark or light the actual shape is. The actual shape is that value. And I could have used a gray, but I find if I use a blue or a color value swap out, the painting will have a little bit more life and a little bit more playfulness. Now I'm going to tone that cerulean blue down a little bit later, but for right now, like I said, it, it is a placeholder. Let's see, the other thing that's happening here is, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I hate it when I forget, but I forgot. Um, this is Arch paper. It's an 8x8 sheet, and I'm working with probably a number 16 brush. Now, the reason I try to paint with using as few brush strokes as possible, not because that's the right thing to do or anything. It's just something I like to do. I like to look at essential shapes and figure out how they create forms. It's a little bit like paint by number for me. And it allows me to keep things loose, and I like things loose. And I'm painting this for me. I'm not painting this for a client or anything. And there are some clients that want to have every hair on a dog shown. And I'm not the painter for that. Quite frankly, I don't paint, I don't take animal commissions anymore anyway. But I thought since I had this desire, I might demonstrate how I would go about painting a, a a dog, which I had not done in a really long time. So you can see the process and you can see the value dabs on the left that I put there because I'm testing them all the time. I want to make sure that my darks are darker. How can I say that? What I'm trying to do is maintain my darks, leave the whites of my paper white, and also create enough different mid-tone forms that they create uh, a, a certain amount of volume and you can identify this as being a dog. That's my goal. That's pretty simple. But in my head, I'm always thinking color, shape, value, color, shape, value, color, shape, value. Occasionally, I'll think about intensity of color, which I think I did with the tongue. I think I go back in and give the tongue a little something because I didn't feel like it had the intensity that I wanted. Part of what draws me into a picture to do in the first place will be an initial something. And in this case, I have to admit, it was the cuteness of the dog, of course, but it was also that pink tongue. I love that pink tongue. <laughs> So I wanted to make sure it was pink enough. I realized on reflection it was a little bit too long. 
So I went back, was, there you can see what's been happening in the studio. I went back and, and made the tongue a little bit shorter with some gouache, white gouache, and I also stuck some highlights into his eyes. And I think I'm going to leave it at that, you know. I, this is kind of what I wanted to do today, keep it simple. And it really soothed me to do this. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, master value mixed for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.